Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your magical moon messages. The peace dealer, the moon is in Pisces, and the sun is in Libra. There's a sixth house aspect of integration, divinely of imagination and metaphysical experiences into your real social dynamics. If you've been experiencing rounds of psychic attack because people are jealous of your amazing character, amongst other things that also highlight the shadow subconscious tendencies for you to get at your own self, then this will be cleared. I'm presenting a bit of a song and presentation because it's Libra season and so I can't just say things. I have to actually put it in a song and performance just like this. I don't know if it, at this point this is an excuse or torture, but welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your magical moon message. I said, hold on. First of all, I said a lot in those 30 seconds. So let's go back and listen to those 30 seconds at least three times because I said a lot. It sounded like bullshit, but I actually did say a lot. So other than that, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. After this full moon, you will be widely thrust into the end times that is this apocalypse cycle. Period that shouldn't fill you with fear, but excitement as some of you carry the keys, codes, and fragments of the new world. Imagine this new heaven and new earth was a sentient conscious existence that collectively expressed itself through chosen ones who are meant to contribute their uniqueness to build this new world and society. And so as this is awakening in all of us, connecting all of us through this illusion of separation, not everyone has chosen with their own actions to be a part of this new world or is a part of this new world. Does that make them less woke? Does that make them bad? I don't think so. When you look at a play or a movie, you might have certain people who play extras or bad guys, but after the movie's over, we meet at the casting. So you can take personal a lot of people's clashing with your beliefs, but you really just want to be more focused on what you're doing, especially on a moon in Pisces. That could be super distracting. The moon's going to be on Neptune. It's going to sextile Uranus. It's going to be now forming a very crucial Yachtington with the Sun in Libra and Uranus and Taurus. And this is going to help you gain divine receptivity towards how, are you ready? How is the sixth house of the moon to Libra to imagine the moon in Pisces, this integration of power we have activated relative to fully expressing new superpowers and how much more knowledgeably you can communicate socially to other people aspects of this super uh, facet of yourself the super self this classic self this artistic self <clears throat> if the third house is the palette in sagittarius where the artist in libra paints then pisces is coloring in the lines right uh, Sagittarius through Capricorn created the structure and now Pisces is coloring the lines with your imagination. Synchronicities are going to be off the chain. If you remember the moon in Scorpio trying to the moon in Pisces now uh, or the Neptune in Pisces now that the moon is on Neptune any synchronicities you've gained a week and a half ago are coming into more understanding once again in relation to integration during this breakthrough arc. So the purpose of the full moon in Aries is you understanding the identity, moon in Aries, of what goes into your expression of your super self. It's, it's, it's Spider-Man understanding that underneath the mask, he's Peter Parker. And that even though he's donning this costume, he still has a responsibility of his true self to, to in that mask to whatever is a great period to watch kick ass uh because they speak on these themes kick ass one and two that you know your 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 true self or a, a superhero is their true self without the costume right the costume is just whatever but i don't this is not about heroes and villains this is about defining the integrative aspect of superpowers 
that you are understanding through your imagination how to really utilize. So once again, once we get into the full moon in Aries, now you've broken through these new superpowers and you're understanding your super self and how you personalize these new superpowers into your identity. Moon in Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Your identity, your values, and your thoughts, which will transform and uplift the philosophy of how you apply that into other people. That means since the new moon, you are working with this new persona. Now you're completing it. You're getting ready to present this through Scorpio into the eclipse. This is phenomenal because because we also have to take into account the cumulative and cyclical nature of transits that have led us up to here. And so you're not just waking up randomly. There are, of course, narratives and plot themes that you have, of course, tangled up to lead to this point. And a whole bunch of bullshit that you might have been projected towards and had to deal with as far as certain things, miscellaneous or relevant, that tied to the expression of your character. You were belittled, ridiculed, or just accused for spewing falsities. In the light of evidence with Mercury coming out of the final degrees of Virgo, evidence and proof coming out of thin air, but really just mainly everything you've always said and analyzed is being further proven to be real. There is a black and white as aspect to this, whether it's not some subjective relative truth bullshit, it's either right or it's wrong. And it kind of works for you too. Like anywhere that you were wrong, you'll be in a position, thank God, to take accountability. Now you know something new. In most cases, you were right. And you don't necessarily want the peer pressure of these oppositions to have you be afraid to claim that because it may not be a popular opinion Anytime you're enabling false narratives to be uh, spewed, you're part of the problem. So take this victory, okay? Because what this integration is going to help you understand, not only is the metaphysical aspects of how your relationship with the collective and also the astral realm influences your logical processing of what you experience here. Mind you, the moon in Pisces is going to oppose Mercury and Virgo. So as it's on Neptune and you're picking in on these supernatural synchronicities, the Mercury and Virgo is giving you detailed analysis of how to understand this. Let me repeat that because that is one of the most important things I've said this transit talk. First of all, tell haters to suck a dick and smack your metaphorical penis across their face. There's less levels of disrespect as the sun will oppose Chiron that you don't want to let this false sense of being nice get in the way of. Balance being vulgar and savage with being classy and palatable so that, you know, you still, you still maintain the balance. The thing here, though, is every single time we've had the moon go into Pisces, we have not had the crystallization of Mercury and Virgo. So we were gaining these considerable mind-blowing synchronicities that tie us into events that may be beyond our current time space, but still feel, of course, real because separation is an illusion. However, now, unlike every single time, every month, the moon conjuncts Neptune, especially since 2012, right? Everything post 2018 saw Neptune coming out of the second decade into the third decade, max level of intuitive understanding, intuitive Neptune, moon and Pisces understanding, understanding the astral realm, metaphysical, supernatural dynamics of high level dream magic or just high level magic and period. Ask any Pisces, they live this life that gives you insight with the moon as a satellite to apply to the sun. But this is the first time Mercury is opposite this in Virgo. This may have happened last year at a lesser degree, but it didn't happen like this with Jupiter that has finished through Aries. So the crystallization at the final degrees of Virgo will take this similar sensation more impacted by the King Kunks of Libra directly to others socially, and you're going to gain crucial insight and details about understanding synchronicities that are, might have been confusing to you since 2012. Like there's, there's a bringing together of everything that's going to get ready to burst itself forward as Mercury will then, after opposing the moon and Neptune, oppose Jupiter, okay? And you feel this, you sense this, this should kind of feel like you're getting ready to boost forward because the moon will also go over Jupiter and boost you forward. Hence it being a part of one of the most powerful full moons this year. Okay. Every, oh. 
<laughs> like, the, like, the rest, like every single trans are moving forward is ridiculous. So this moon in Pisces, uh, just l allow elements of your own fantasies and ways you want to live your life with the right people kind of come through because you're going to be able to integrate elements of the supernatural into your behavior and lifestyle. And that's a now, now the rest of this magic moon message, I want to be expressly controversial because we really now need to speak about certain things that are just still generally unaccepted in mainstream. The whole notion, of, whether religiously or scientifically, the whole notion of divination, the whole notion of remote viewing, the whole notion of telekinesis, the whole notion of telepathy, the whole notion of levitation, the whole notion of energy harnessing and being able to coral chi from your fingers. You're a bitch if you don't believe any of this shit is real. I'm sorry, I don't care. At this point, like, you either believe this is real or not. I'm, you're not a bitch if you apply a skeptical mind frame and you test it, right? If you're actually actively testing it, then you'll prove it that it's right because you're testing it. But like, this is a this is where we're reaching a crucial pushback. It's not 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, where you could be ridiculed for even speaking about this. This is the push of the revolution. The purpose of Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius is to now take at this quality of Neptune and Pisces and Uranus and Taurus elements of the outward expression of supernatural powers and abilities or just talents and abilities and align it into your intellectual capability to transform psychologically through Scorpio as we ascend through Sagittarius. This is why it's the breakthrough arc. You're getting ready to step forward into expressing yourself in ways you've never done before. It's just the outer planets, unlike any other year we've done this, is specifically supernatural addition, the supernatural breakthrough addition. If you've never levitated, you're realizing how you have been levitating, you just weren't aware of it. If you've never had a telepathic conversation, you're realizing how what you thought were your thoughts was a telepathic conversation. If you've never seen a ghost or if you've never seen an apparition or a deity, you're realizing you always have. You just didn't know. Your brain couldn't process that what you were seeing was that because these things are going to with the moon and Pisces unveil themselves as if they were there the whole time because they were. All right. There is an intuitive intelligence that comes with things beyond this realm and the hubris that the human mind or society can put to think that you can fit it in your own box of understanding when you are about as minuscule as a chip on a circuit board which is both good and bad you just have to be willing to as neptune will help you transcend your doubts and beliefs around what you think is possible so you can change your beliefs moon and pisces you can change your understanding of your beliefs that will help facilitate the integration of new superpowers because you can also doubt okay and this is what's going to bring me back to the beginning of this talk the psychic attack is unreal you're not a victim, by the way. When I talk about psychic attack, it's like rain. These are just frequencies, right? You're not a bitch. You're not a coward. So like, it's not like you can't deal with these frequencies. You are not a victim, but we still need to bring light to them because if we dismiss and deny them, that also doesn't help too. So your relationship with these frequencies, like some of you are recognizing how powerful you are. Many people are getting psychically jumped energetically through frequencies and vibrations, through mass collectives, um, being guided by groups or, or, or certain, you know, whether this is done naturally or, or deliberately to project negative energy at people. Most people commit suicide when this happens. Depression is not a joke, my friends. Vibrational warfare is weird, real. You are dealing with the same thing as certain people get super depressed and commit suicide and you chilling. It's not like you're not stressed, but you chilling. And these people don't know how to approach you because it's like you're a one man army out here or some of you are connected with other cliques and they bang for you too. And so this is now making more real out of the abstract and connecting that into your real dynamics by seeing how to play this out. But you're not a victim. I don't wanna say this to where it's anything you have to look over your shoulder and be mad at. It's more like rain. You put an umbrella out for rain. You just have to put the armor of God on, deal with these frequencies. But as you change your relationship, the whole purpose is the changing of these power dynamics. This is the final step 
before the full moon where the power balance and dynamics between you and other people shift forever. And many people and archetypes socially and collectively that might have felt better than you because of their race, their gender or whatever, you're flipping that on its head. And you're going to see true insecurity in those who need to feel better than others to feel good about themselves. They some weak little bitches. Okay, y'all stay blessed as always. Godspeed. And uh, until this full moon, holla at me. I'll see ya. Stay blessed. Peace.